Welcome to Front Page Bets. Mike Savetitz here, the general manager, content director. Jerry Ahern, our senior content editor. Super Bowl 56. Kicking off Sunday. Uh, Rams, Bengals. If you would have said at the beginning of the year that the Rams and the Bengals were going to play in, in the Super Bowl. <laughs> yeah. I don't think anybody saw this one coming. No one saw this coming. Chiefs, Bucks, you know. Even maybe the Tennessee Titans and the Packers after right. the way that the seasons that they had, but you know the Bengals and the Rams. Let's 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 just look at the game. You know, it's a f- right now four point spread. The the Rams are four point favorites. Um, coming into the game, better record, seemingly better offense, better defense. I mean, if you look at it down, we can, we can break down the matchup. But you know, the Rams season under Sean McVay and who, and and how they've kind of got to this place really defensively has, has been, but Matthew Stafford, a guy that they traded in, got from Detroit, yep. basically sold the farm for mm-hmm. to, to bring them to a Super Bowl. And McVay, I mean, looks like a genius now. Did he look like a genius when he did it? Well, I think, um, you know, he went all in to use a betting term yeah. and um, it's, you know, he's on the brink of getting over the hump. I mean, Stafford is an amazing quarterback. I've witnessed his career in Detroit over the years, um, but he's, you know, uh, early 30s. Got a lot of, you know, mileage on the tires, but can still make plays. And, I mean, the Rams have really developed into basically an all-star team. you got not just Matthew Stafford at the helm, but you've got uh, Cooper Cup, probably the, the biggest playmaker in, yeah. in the NFL right now. you got Odell Beckham Jr., uh, just to throw him in, you know, a guy <laughs> who's uh, been a heck of a, uh, a talent, you know, elsewhere and mm-hmm. is finally going to get his due. Um, you look on the defensive side with Aaron Donald, probably the most dominant defensive player in the league. Um, I like the Rams a lot in this one. No offense, Cincinnati, yeah. but um, <laughs> you're going to enjoy being there. But I think it's going to be a tough one for you. Yeah, I mean, you mentioned the playmakers. Then you're not even talking about Jalen Ramsey, who's probably the, the the top corner in the league. You've mm-hmm. got you know you've got Von Miller winning the Super Bowl with Denver. Not, not a bad player. Not not a bad player in his own right. You know, overshadowed by. You know Aaron Donald. You've got you've got a lot of playmakers there. You got a running game that with the Rams starting to get healthy. Cam Akers is back. You have Sony Michelle. Yep. I think that this this team, as you look at them on paper, you say, well, they've got all the talent in the world. Of course they should be here. But what was the difference for the Rams this year to get to, to get over that hump? Was it Stafford and 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 his gunslinging mentality where he's just you know they're going to throw the ball and. And, and play good defense. It was Stafford, but it wasn't his gunslinging. It was actually he's a better decision maker because he's in a better position to make plays. He doesn't have to make the spectacular play. He's getting better pass protection. Um, he's, you know, older and wiser, and he's looking for his checkdowns. And, I mean, uh, you know, the switch for Stafford from Jared Goff is a pretty major talent uh, differential, as we saw in Detroit. I mean, um, he's just a different uh, level of, ability and skill and um you know he proved that in a 12 and 5 regular season record um pretty strong qbr um not making you know as many mistakes as he might have in the past when he was trying to force things and i think that's a big difference yeah you don't have to force things when you have playmakers around you right and, and you got a defense where you know if you, you can live the fight another day where you don't have to try to make plays you know, and you're not on your back five right. times a game because you're not getting protected up front it's true on the other side the Bengals coming in um you know, a, a team that's as scrappy, led by quarterback Joe Burrow, who you know I've made really kind of no bones of the way I feel about this kid. I think he's I think he's a tremendous talent. Not he only sure is. not only physically, you know, can he make all the throws, make the decisions, but he's just got a swagger about him, and you can tell from you can tell from the you know the the gif of the cigar of him smoking the cigar in the in the locker room after the national championship game when they beat Clemson, when LSU beat Clemson in twenty nineteen. Sure. To you know, just the, the kind of the outfits that he walks around the with, diamonds. you know, the diamonds. You, you like know. the diamonds? I th- it's like the rock, <laughs> you know, the rock the turtleneck that the rock have with the fan. I always just need the fanny pack. But this kid, you know, in his second year, and he really didn't. Need, this is his really first full year because he tore his ACL last year, right. midway through the year. Um, you know, this kid's playing with a lot of swagger on a team that, again, wasn't really picked to do much and. We talked about you know Matthew Stafford not being on his back five times a game to, right. to make plays. Joe Burrow has been on his back a lot, sacked fifty one times in the regular season, nine times in the divisional playoff against Tennessee, and still puts him in position not only to be in the game but to win the game. 
Well, you look at the plays that he can make with his feet, too. I think that's an underrated right. trait that, that Burrow has. And, you know, he's in position to be the first quarterback ever to win a, a national championship in college, a Heisman, and then the Super Bowl, which is pretty amazing if you think about the, you know, some of the great players that have been right. with, you know, that level of credentials. But, I mean, he, you know, he is sort of a la Joe Namath, you know, another Joe or Joe Montana. Um, this exactly. kid is tough. Uh, he's got a lot of guts. He's, he, he makes smart decisions for the most part, and um, he's the leader of the overachievers. But uh, I like the all-star team. Sorry. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, but if you look at the supporting cast on both of those teams, right, we sure. talked about the Rams, but if you look at the Bengals, you know, you got Jamar Chase, who's a, a phenomenal talent, yeah. uh, a great receiver, not only possession receiver, but can make the big plays. Joe Mixon at the running back. Um, defensively, though, they've really impressed in, in, in staying in games, especially in the playoffs, not letting it get too far out of hand. Case in point for me was they're down to Kansas City 18 at the half. Right. You know, Kansas City, we could talk all day about, you know, Kansas City, should, should they have kicked the field goal before halftime? Should they have tried to go? Whatever that is. But you could tell that this team, even though they gave up, you know, what was it, 21 or 24 points in the first half, they – the the defense didn't panic and they shut down the probably the best offense with the hottest quarterback at the time. Um, talk about an all star team in Kansas City. Right. They shut them down, only gave up three second half points, forced an overtime to win. I think this defense is playing with kind of that swagger that Joe Burrow has, but now these guys are actually playing we, we can if we can shut down Kansas City, can they shut down the Rams? You know, yeah. that's the mentality. Well, and it, it had to give them a lot of confidence. I mean, biggest comeback ever in playoff history. Yeah. Um, 18 down, um, looking at it being against Patrick Mahomes, who's pretty much had, I mean, I think most people watching that game are probably like, oh, here we go yeah. again. You know, we're going to have the drive. Yep. Um, it, it was an amazing effort, and it, it definitely has got to give them a lot of confidence. But, um, again, trying to, like, run that table four in a row is, is pretty difficult. It's a, it's a home game for the Rams, you know, so there's something in that. Right, you know they're playing in SoFi Stadium in Inglewood, California. So the second team ever to to, to host a, a Super Bowl to have a home game. You know Tampa did it last year when they won. Tom Brady um, in that team. Now the Rams have a home game, four point favorites. The difference, though, what's the difference? If it comes down to the end of the game, the reason I think the Bengals have a legitimate shot, not only not only because you know I think Joe Burrow is just until you beat that kid, you know yeah. you can't count him out. Evan McPherson, the kicker for for the Bengals, a rookie kicker who has just been nails. Yep. Two walk off kicks in the playoffs hasn't missed. I mean, I think I think you know. Then you've got you know a chance for this team if they keep it close. They who says they can't win? They've done it. They've been there. They've done that. Yeah. Well, if it comes down to a kick, then you know you, you have to like the Bengals' chances. Right. I don't see it's going to come down that way. I think it's going to be a little bit more of a ball control offense. A couple of good throws to mm -hmm. Cup, uh, and maybe Beckham, yeah. and then uh, you know I, I like the Rams to both you know cover and uh, just straight up money line win. Nice. So yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll think the Bengals a little bit. I'll give my picks, picks and predictions later this week. We'll, we'll walk through that. But I think you you know which way I'm leaning, especially being four four point dogs. I think if, You're if a diamond the game Joe is, guy. if the game is close, the game is close. I like I like the Bengals there. Um, you know, I think the Super Bowl, regardless, is going to be. We we talked about it from the player standpoint, from the field standpoint. All, also, will is looking a survey that came out today, looking to be the most heavily betted uh, national or NFL championship game in history. Seven point six billion or something like that that they're looking to the the a bets made just on this one game. Right. I mean, we talked about this industry legal in in in, in thirty states. Online gambling is legal in, in 19 states. Um, it's more part of the mainstream. You can't turn on TV. You can't right. go on social media without seeing, you know, um, promotions and, and ads for, for, for sports books and betting. You know, with this game, does that change any of it at all? I mean, we're in an era now with legalized sports betting. Um, on the Super Bowl, we're talking about billions of dollars being bet in one weekend. How, how does that change? Does it change the game on the field or does it at least change the way it's, 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 it's received and the way it's kind of almost consumed? I think it changes the way it's consumed. I think if you're, you know, a sports fan who has an interest um, beyond a rooting interest in one of these teams, you might want to look at a proposition bet for, you know, how many touchdown passes is Matthew Stafford going to mm -hmm. throw? You want, might want to look at a proposition bet for Joe Burrow's rushing yards, just 
to have a little fun. I mean, there, there are fun things too. I mean, you can, um, in some markets, you can bet on what color, you know, the Gatorade bath will be. You can bet on the length of, you know, the national anthem, those types of things. If you're, you're just out to have some fun. And the Super Bowl is really an event that sort of transcends sports. Um, you know, obviously with the advertising, everyone wants to watch the commercials. The halftime shows are always, you know, uh, rife with a little speculation and potential controversy. Uh, it's a real entertainment event as much as it is a sporting event. And I think that is reflected in the betting uh, angle for, you know, people who aren't necessarily hardcore, you know, NFL fans even. Oh, well, here at Front Page Bets, where our goal is to educate, inform, and entertain, educate you on where to place the bets, or, or at least what's legal and what's not legal, inform you on, on the game and the, and the teams, and then, you know, also entertain you. We'll have it all here, Super Bowl week, all coverage at frontpagebets.com. Jerry O'Hearn, I'm Mike Savitz. Thanks for watching. Thanks, guys. Oh, yeah.